Hey YouTube, welcome back to Dark Metals. In today's video, I'm going to talk a little bit about bandsaws. Now, some of you may have seen the video that we did back in October of 2015, where we made the uh, iron cross here. This is a forged piece, but before you put this in the forge, you cut it. Um, a lot of people use a hacksaw, we use the horizontal metal cutting bandsaw. And I've been wanting to get a vertical bandsaw <clears throat> for quite a while. These are just really handy. Uh, I looked at a couple from Lowe's and Home Depot and some of the other big box stores, and for a 9-inch model that was halfway decent, you're looking to spend about $180. Um, this bandsaw I was fortunate enough to find on Craigslist. This is a central machine bandsaw. It's the model that was manufactured in Taiwan, and they made thousands of them and just painted them different colors for different companies. So this is one of the old... Uh, versions. It's got the solid cast base. It's extremely heavy. It weighs about 175 pounds. And I don't even know if Harbor Freight has this model anymore. I think what they have now is a lot cheaper. Um, this is a full 14-inch bandsaw. Um, I picked it up for $20 more than what I would have spent on a 9-inch version at one of the big box stores. And what I really like about this is the gentleman who bought it wanted it for a project. And like so many... Uh, do-it-yourselfers, sometimes you find out that you're overwhelmed in what you're trying to take on and you hire someone else to do it and if you've bought a tool, maybe it sits in a box for a decade or so. So this was brand new, still in the box, manufactured back in 2001 and I picked this up for $20 more than what I would have spent on a new one made of plastic that only had a 9-inch capacity. But the first thing I noticed is that it has this big sticker on the side that says wood cutting. And a lot of these that came out of Taiwan say that, but it's really not the bandsaw's decision on whether or not it's a wood cutting or a metal cutting saw. That's all up to the blade. After putting the bandsaw together, I installed the blade that it came with from the factory. And this is a wood cutting blade. You could see, um, don't know how well you could see, let me see if I can zoom in just a bit for you here. You can see how far apart the teeth are, and that's usually an indication of what kind of a blade uh, you're working with. The closer together the teeth are, um, the finer the cut, and uh, if you're using a bimetal blade, you can use it on just about any kind of material you want. So let me back out here. <clears throat> this is just three-quarter ply. still need to track down that rattle. I think it's got something to do with the belt, but you get a nice decent cut with a brand new fresh blade. What some people don't know, this is aluminum. It's actually a piece to an old road sign I picked up at a scrapyard. Um, I used it for a project and rather than just throwing it in the scrap bin, now I can use it for a demo. If you go really easy, a wood cutting blade being steel will cut aluminum. You just can't force it through. So here we are folks, this is the package from the blade that I'm going to be installing in the saw and as you can see it cuts ferrous metals, non-ferrous metals, um, non-metallic materials, which is uh, it, one thing that caught my eye is asbestos. You can technically cut asbestos with this at 400 feet per minute, which is one of the ratings for the saw. I don't know anyone in their right mind who would want to cut asbestos on a bandsaw. Um, you know, it just gives you an idea of the different safety standards in different countries. This blade happened to be made in India. Um, all you need to do really is pay attention to the feed rates, how fast the blade is moving to cut different materials. So this one, let's see, is 24 teeth per inch. It's the length that I need for this particular saw. I'm going to open it up and install it off camera, and we're going to try to cut some steel. Let's start out by cutting something fairly thin. This is uh, just some sheet metal, sheet steel.
Next, let's cut a piece of uh, typical shelving material. This is just a hair thinner than eighth inch. I could have raised my foot up a little bit more, but uh, it went through all right. Alright YouTube, so if you've ever been in the market for a bandsaw and wondered if the wood cutting bandsaw will cut metal in a pinch, absolutely. It depends all on the bandsaw blade that you're using. Uh, the last thing that you saw me cut was half inch thick steel and as you can see, you know, it's not, um, it's not as clean as some cutting methods but it is halfway decent. It's nice and smooth once it's deferred. Uh, it's just as good as the horizontal bandsaw that I have with the flood coolant. The trick is, with this type of a bandsaw, you can't force the metal through the blade. You have to really let the blade do all the work, applying a minimal amount of pressure. And that's really the secret, to make sure that your blade stays sharp and you get a decent cut. Um, one of the downsides of a vertical bandsaw versus a horizontal, um, the horizontal bandsaws are typically gravity fed, where the uh, weight of the machine itself just slowly cuts through the metal and it gives you a nice even pace. Um, and it typically makes a straighter cut than trying to do something freehand on a vertical model. Um, that's really the only downside. Sometimes it is difficult to cut in a straight line with something like this, especially when you're going through thicker material. But um, I think you get the idea that this is something that is possible and it is an option for you. And uh, I hope you learned something and enjoyed the video. Until the next video, this has been Jeff at Dark Moon Metals, and I'll see you again soon.